Hey there, fellow homeschool mom, Katie Hedrick here. I am a mom of three amazing kiddos, and I'm also the host of the Joy at Home podcast. I love helping moms like you step into homeschool the easy way. And also I love diving into curriculum and curriculum reviews. And so today we're talking about math, which disclaimer, math is not my wheelhouse. Math is not my favorite subject, nor am I super well-versed in math, especially as my kids are getting older, getting into those high school levels. So we found a program that I absolutely love that has been a complete and total lifesaver in the realm of math, and that is teaching textbooks and their online math curriculum. So today I'm going to take you inside of that program to take a peek at the parent portal and also at what the lessons kind of look like. After that, I'm actually going to share with you some additional math resources that my family has really enjoyed utilizing. I'm going to share my screen with you here, and we are going to take a look at the inner workings of the teaching textbooks online curriculum. I love this curriculum. It makes math so easy for a mom who is not super incredibly good at math. This program has been an absolute lifesaver. They do offer all of these different courses here. So math three, all the way up through pre-calc. You can do testing, placement testing to see where your child would land, but pretty much this is like math, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, and on and on. And so the next thing that I want to show you then is this parent portal login right here. Teaching textbooks makes it so easy. Oh my goodness. I'm going to go ahead and get logged in. Okay. And so once you're inside the parent portal, there are several different things that you can do here, but we're going to go into the grade book and you can easily see your children or your students listed here. You can click on their name. You can go in and check out all of the courses that they've done in the past, the courses that they're currently working on. You can go in and check their grades for each lesson. In fact, you can go inside each lesson and do a deep dive and kind of see what they get correct, where are they struggling? And then you know what to go back and, and help them work on, or maybe even have them redo. Teaching textbooks is a spiral-based learning curriculum. So they'll learn something here in you know the early lessons. They'll continue to build on that, but also review it as they go along. There are quizzes as they go along. And then when they're finished for the year with that particular course that they're taking, you are able to go in and print it out and actually get a final score for each child. So that's just kind of what that looks like. It gives me all of his scores, his final scores for the year here. It's so great. I just absolutely love it. So if we go back, I'm going to show you inside of my oldest child, Chloe. So she was doing geometry this year. And it shows as she finished her course, it shows her overall course average. Again, this calculates, it makes grading so easy because it calculates up all of her scoring throughout the whole entire year. If you go into the lesson again here, it's going to show you problems, right? Problems wrong and all the things you can see if she viewed the solution, if she asked for a little hint and how all of that worked. Okay, the other thing I want to actually do is show you inside of the child's portion. Okay, so here we're going to see a small sampling of what might be inside. I clicked on just math level five, so this would be equivalent to math fifth grade. My kids love to do this program each day on an iPad with an Apple Pencil, but your student can do this program on a laptop or a desktop computer. They also can do it on an iPad. Sometimes they'll use scratch paper, but the nice thing about uh, using teaching textbooks with the iPad and Apple Pencil is that they're able to just do that all right within the iPad itself. So here's just a little sampling of what you might find inside um, one lesson of teaching textbooks, Math 5. Lesson 39, Introduction to Fractions. So far in this course, we've only learned about whole numbers. But sometimes we need to talk about a part of something instead of the whole. For example, if two college roommates were going to share a pepperoni pizza, each roommate should get half of the pizza, right? Well, the way to write that in math is with the fraction 1 over 2. That's how we describe 
I'm going to pause that right there, but you can see that every lesson begins with this kind of interactive lecture. I love the voice of the guy that is going through the lesson with the kids. He's, he's almost like storytelling and teaching textbooks. Almost. It's almost kind of like gamified, but they are learning incredibly deep mathematical things. So the kids enjoy it because it kind of feels like a game all the while they are learning math with diligence and excellence. I'm going to skip ahead just a little bit here. If it'll let me kind of towards the end of the lesson, we'll just take a look at that. But the main point is that the bottom of a fraction, the denominator, that tells how many pieces the whole is divided into. And the top of the fraction, the numerator, that tells how many pieces are being counted. So that's what kind of the end of the lecture portion looks like. And then it's going to take you into the practice problems so that the students have a chance to implement what they have learned here on a handful of practice problems before they go into the actual problems that are then graded. Let's take a look at this. We need to write the sum of 53 cents and 44 cents in dollar form. And an easy way to do this is just to add these two together in the cents form and then change the cents form to the dollar form. So we'll add 53 plus 44. We'll put 53 on top and line up 1s over 1s and 10s over 10s. And then 3 plus 4 is 7, and 5 plus 4 is 9. So there's 97, and then we'll put in our cent symbol, 97 cents. So now we need to turn 97 cents into the dollar form. So remember, we'll just take away that cent symbol, and then we'll think of 97 as 97.0, and we'll move our decimal point two places to the left. So we have 0.97 or nine tenths and seven hundredths because it's 97 hundredths of a dollar. And so now I'm going to pause right there, but as you see, it kind of walks the student through those practice problems and kind of helps them letting them know that every problem has a step-by-step -step solution and helps them work through those. And then we come into the actual problems for the lesson. We'll take a quick look at this here. Oh, I guess there's actually no no audio here to this because your student is actually doing the work at this point. So this is a sample of what their problem would look like. They are then able to grab some scratch paper or use the iPad and Apple Pencil to work out the problem. And then they'll type their answer in right here. They get little stars and stickers and, and whatnot, virtual high fives when they get those problems uh, correct. And then it is just saying that the app includes a full searchable ebook that can be printed by the parent or used in the app. So that's handy. Lots of additional resources. It talks about the grading system and I already showed you the parent portal login. Oh, I absolutely love that. Makes it so easy on my part. So that's a quick look at teaching textbooks, our absolute favorite, number one, highly recommended math program. Every homeschool mom loves a great math resource. Am I right? Anything that makes life easier when it comes to teaching math, I find particularly helpful and I really enjoy. So a few things that I want to share with you. First of all, these very simple math multiplication flashcards, they came off Amazon. I will link them in the description. Nothing fancy about these at all. They are just your old plain Jane, normal. You probably grew up using these, whether you were homeschool or public school, but math flashcards as your student is diving into multiplication. I found this book, The Times Machine by Danica McKellar, and it was another lifesaver when it came to teaching my child multiplication. She has some really fun, different little rhymes and rhythms and rhymes and verses that help the kiddos to learn and memorize their multiplication facts, just some really fun tips and tricks. And so my fourth grader and I, third grader, fourth grader, went through this book and really, really enjoyed learning. In fact, I took some of her little rhythms and rhymes that she shares in the book and actually made our own little flashcards. So let's see, here's an example. She gave the little rhyme, goodness, what a sticky floor, eight times eight is 64. And so I made this little flashcard. And so my child could memorize that rhyme. Here's another one. My blocks turned into dirty bricks. Six times six is 36. So gotta love anything that can help with multiplication. The last thing for helping with multiplication is this lift the flap times table book. This is by the Usborne company. I think the name has actually changed, but it's kind of a fun resource that your student can flip through and then pull the tabs back as they are learning their 
times tables, just kind of a fun, interactive book. Then as your student is getting older and we're getting into even more, more things, things like Pi, I found this fun book, Circumference and the Dragon of Pi, Radius and the Number Pi. This is an entire series, a math adventure series. Again, I'll link this up in the description, but it tells this whole big story. <laughs> it's so cute and funny, but it tells the whole big story about Circumference and the Dragon of Pi. Got to bring a little humor in where we can, right, homeschool mom? And then these are just very simple workbooks that I grabbed off of Amazon. Again, this is just some daily times table practice. They make these in multiplication, division. They probably even have addition and subtraction. But all of these workbooks I just had for my kids so that every day they're diving in and just doing a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and building on those things. Again, spiral learning, that's where I'm at. That's what it's all about. Kids are learning as they go. They're learning more and more, and then they're practicing honing in on those skills that they've already learned. All right, I hope you found those additional resources really valuable. They'll add up in your homeschool. Hopefully you can divide and conquer when it comes to math for you and your kids. I wanna help and see all of you thrive. I am so happy to support you on your homeschooling journey, mom. You can head over to teachme2homeschool.com. While you're there, be sure and download my free curriculum guide, which features my top 10 all-time favorite picks. Teaching textbooks is in there. Of course, it's my favorite math curriculum. Download your copy today. I'll see you next time.